Greetings, Vault citizens, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Today, we're going to go over my top 10 tips and tricks for Fallout 76. So, stay tuned and let's check them out. All right, so I've seen a lot of top 10 tips and tricks things online and I've looked around and they all seem to be very bare bones basic stuff. So we're going to skip over the basic things and we're going to go to the more intermediate and advanced tips for people who are both new to the game, but also they've sunk in their teeth in and they're starting to get to know how to play the game a little bit more and they want some more expert tips. So I did my best to come up with the trickiest tips that I can think of for this guide and let's just get right into them. All right, my first tip of the day, guys, is the vendors reset their caps every 24 hours i have made this guide i will have a link to it down in the description below there are seven vendor factions in the game each faction shares 200 max caps each if you travel to all seven vendors once per day you can make a possible 1400 cap this took me several hours to put together and it's it's super helpful for me so the way it works is the responders are one faction all the orange ones are one faction the raiders are another faction in a white springs is another enclave is its own but it's locked behind a room that you need to do a quest for to get the pass card to get in Watago shopping center and then harper's ferry is another unique one so these ones are all standalone they don't have any other shared vendors with them and so is the white white spring bunker so this is really important because they do not share cap stashes with each other which means if you're doing a quick roundabout and you have all this bulk steel or bulk something a bunch of junk meds booze chems you can go around the world selling to these people so what you could do is you could hit up flatwoods here go to sutton go to white springs greenbrier hit up the bunker head down the rng station jump over to watoga shopping center watoga station you can sell two more and head up to harper's ferry for more and you can make 1400 caps they also all have unique recipes that you could buy it's very very useful all right everybody it's a simple tip but not many people know it and it's very very handy so upon leveling up you can normally choose choose what kind of special you want and then you pick a card well what people don't really realize is let's just say i want to increase my intelligence but while picking a luck card simultaneously if i start with intelligence i'm now putting the special point into intelligence from here i can use the left and right bumpers to go to a whole other tab so we can move over to luck and now we can pick the card we want and i'll show you this here i'm gonna go with starched jeans and now look at our intelligence is at six and we've also picked a new luck card. So why is this important? Well, if you're trying to min max your character, my build, I don't want any more than five luck. I'm locking myself at five luck, but I no longer want junk shield or pharma pharma. I want to start replacing those with the luck cards that I need, but I still have levels to go and I still have special points to distribute. So very simple tip, but very useful tr for trying to min max your special stats while picking cards from a different special. Next big tip, power armor frames weigh 10 pounds and the actual armor pieces themselves weigh a boatload. Check these out. You can see here each fusion core weighs weighs three pounds, the helmet's 11, 12, 14, 12, 14, and 17. That is a lot of weight. Do not bother stashing these items in your stash because they're gonna weigh down your very precious stash limit of 400 pounds. Once you're able to equip these pieces, you can simply throw them on your power armor frame as well as the fusion cores. You can store them there, three pounds each. All of that added up is probably 100 pounds. So you have 100 pounds of power armor stuff and fusion cores that would normally take up a lot of space in your inventory, but when you collect it, it's only weighing you down 10 pounds so you could essentially carry that at all times no point in storing the armor pieces themselves or the fusion cores as the power armor acts as a storage unit for those things i didn't bother to collect power armor until i was the appropriate level there's a power armor guide online i'll bring it up on screen right now you can see all the different power armor locations in the world with this i'll have a link down in the description below me and my team we ran around the world and we grabbed us all power armor once we all hit level 30. The people who are lower level are waiting because they don't want to fill up their stash box yet. Next tip, adhesive. So I have four bulk adhesive here. I also have excess adhesive in my bank that's not bulk wrapped yet. That is a total of 40 adhesive with plenty more on the go. So adhesive is used to 
Repair, modify, and craft weapons and armor. As you can see, repairing this weapon here is three adhesive. So there you go. You can have an adhesive farm. How do you make adhesive? You plant corn, potatoes, and mute fruit. Once you harvest all those, come over to your cooking station under utility, vegetable starch, corn, mute fruit, purified water, and taters. You craft some vegetable starch and that scraps into, I think it scraps into two adhesive. You have water purifiers at your base and there you go. You have everything you need for infinite adhesive right here for your needs. Next tip, stash limit. All right, so I've played this game for a total of 60 hours since release. I played the beta as well, but it's only been a few days since release. You can see I'm at 340 out of 400. That's actually not bad for a character that's level 43, and I played this long with that many hours on my character. But you may find yourself hitting that 400 limit. What do you do to reduce it? How do you keep it down to a nice 300, 340 in that area? Well, there's plenty of things that you can do. The easiest one is going to be at the Tinker Station under bulk with a little bit of plastic you can bulk wrap your items. Another little tip right there with bulking, uh, vendors will buy bulk junk. They will not buy unbulked junk, or at least some of it. I know they won't buy steel, but they will buy bulk steel, which you'll have an excess amount of. So I end up selling a lot of my steel. So you get that plastic, you bulk wrap your items, and it reduces the weight of the junk. Another handy way to reduce weight is under ammunition. Do not hold on to mini nukes, missiles, or any miscellaneous ammo. Currently, vendors do not buy ammo, so try giving it to a friend first. If there's a certain type of weapon that you do not ever use, you might as well get rid of it. I'll probably get rid of these 0.50 caliber rounds, as well as these 0.50 rounds. I'm not going to be using them. I mainly stick to 308, 38, and enter, uh, fusion cells right now on this character. I like to store my shotgun shells so when I, I can go on a heyday with a shotgun once in a while, but I don't craft it. I'll probably pull out a 10 millimeter pistol at some point and use up all that ammo and let it rebuild. So another way of reducing that is to use whatever you have excess of until it's gone and you've essentially reduced your weight, but drop the heavy stuff for sure. Another big tip here is you'll see my aid section is completely empty. That's all medical supplies and food is carried on my character at all times. Why is that? Isn't it weighing me down? No, look, I'm only at 110 pounds. Look how much aid and food I have on me. Insane amounts. 58 stim packs that normally weigh a pound each. Well, check this out. Traveling Pharmacy, I highly recommend this. Reduces the weight of all chems, including stim packs, and that's the important part where it says including stim packs, is reduced by 90%. Stim packs is where it's at. Uh, they weigh a pound each. I carry hundreds of them at all times on me, and I've effectively reduced that 100 pounds down to 10 pounds of weight. And you're also finding chems, mentats, psycho, all that stuff around the world. And then you're going to vendor that off. But in the meantime, you're going to be carrying it. No point in putting in your stash because this buff card does not apply to your stash. But when it's on you, it practically weighs nothing. And because it's not considered junk, when somebody kills you or if you die, nobody's going to steal it from you. On that same note, Through Hiker is another highly recommended one from me. Food and drink weighs are reduced by 90% because I have such a big farm and I'm always boiling water. And I'm always cooking food and all that stuff. And I'm always harvesting. And I have green thumb, which I'm gathering so many fr fruits and vegetables all that stuff weighs practically nothing. So I can carry unlimited amounts of food for me and my team and it weighs nothing and it takes up nothing because it's not in my stash box. And last but not least, something to consider is pack rat. The weight of all junk is reduced by 75%. Once in a while when my inventory is very, very full, I like to take out some of the bulk goods that I don't use such as bulk steel, bulk cloth, uh, bulk ceramic, anything that I'm not really going to need a lot of. I carry it on my character because it practically weighs nothing when it's on my my character rather than weighing a lot in the stash. I do risk losing it if I die, but I'm very careful and I am playing a medic. So that is a bonus. And if you guys want to see my medic guide, go check out my other videos on my channel because it is a super fun class to build and uh, I do not die. So I'm not worried about dropping my junk and this junk I actually intend on selling to vendors anyways. So I might as well be carrying it. So when I run into a vendor, I can sell it. Next up is tagging items plus plastic. <laughs> it's a two for one here. So if you're ever trying to craft or repair something, you'll see there's a little button in the bottom that says tag for search. And all of a sudden a magnifying glass appears on the item that you're missing. And when you run up to something in the world, you'll see the magnifying glass on it, which means you are looking for this item. I am always low on plastic because of the bulk wrapping that we mentioned earlier, as well as other things like fusion cells needing plastic to be able to craft those ammo types and many, many other things. I'm always out of plastic. It's my number one resource. So 
So I'm gonna jump over to some footage here that I grabbed earlier. Camden Park, everybody, check this out. There are plastic cups littered throughout the whole park everywhere. It's absolutely absurd. Y you will have a heyday there. Every time I go to Camden Park, I come out with about 40 plastic. Well, it doesn't seem like much. You're only spending about five minutes there. You're getting some EXP, killing some ghouls. You can do the daily Camden mission if you want, and you're going to clear out all the plastic cups on the ground. You're playing janitor. It's a little bit lame, but it, as of right now, it's the fastest way that I know of of getting plastic, and if you want, there's a little trick you can do. You can log out of the world, log back in and join a new world. Once you join into that world, you will then have a brand new Camden Park full of cups on the ground. In theory, you could sit there picking up cups, logging out, coming back in, picking up cups, repeat the process until you have a, a surplus of plastic and plastic is so freaking rare. I played the game for hours and hours and hours and hours and I still feel like I'd never have enough plastic because you can literally just chew through plastic, bulk wrapping items and you definitely need to bulk wrap items to clear up that storage space. So doing that little Camden trick is definitely an essential, really good tip. So go check that out. All right, next one's a little bit subjective to play style, but I'm gonna mention it anyways. You can see here, strength is a measure of your raw physical power. It affects how much you could carry and the damage of melee attacks. So this is the tip, melee is OP. <laughs> it might seem like the obvious, but the only special in the game to directly affect weapon damage is strength. You cannot increase your perception to do more damage with guns. It only increases the accuracy of vats. You cannot increase your agility to, to affect the damage of your weapons. It just gives you more action points in vats. Or no other special in the game will directly affect your weapon damage. So I'm going to have some footage here in the background. You guys will see almost every single video that you'll see on my channel. You'll see me with my friends and I'm generally, most of the time, using a melee. Sometimes I'll use a rifle at range, but I'll always sprint up close and use the melee weapon because it just simply kills 10 times faster. Right now I'm level 43 and I basically two shot or one shot every single mob in the game. I have footage of me fighting level 50 elite legendary monsters and I'm just punching them in the head and killing them in like 10 hits. Whereas <laughs> if I wasn't doing that, my entire team would be sitting there with rifles, bang, 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 firing at these things for five, 10 minutes, what breaking weapons, running out of ammo, when you could just run up to it and punch it 10 times and it dies. <laughs> I cannot express how overpowered melee is in this game right now. This here, what you're seeing in the footage, it's without a single melee damage perk card just raw strength. So if you play with rifles, you have to put all these points into riflemen, expert riflemen, mass, uh, master riflemen, all those perk cards, increasing your damage. And, and after putting all those points in, all those precious perk cards, you still don't even match the damage of melee. It's absolutely ridiculous how powerful melee is. Having said that, strength also boosts your carry weight, which is also very important in this game. You can't go wrong with a strength-based character because the melee is directly affected by that, as well as your carry weight, and you'll have so much fun with the power fist, the super sledge, the baseball rocket weapon. There's so many fun melee weapons. It's just so hilarious and fun to crank out enemies. It's just a blast. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you don't overlook melee. And remember, it's directly affected from strength. So it's going to have the potential, the highest potential damage output in the game other than maybe mini guns on a heavy build full of perk cards, which also consumes ammo. It's free damage. Look at it that way. It costs nothing to repair a melee weapon. Free damage, guys. Doesn't consume ammo. Hugely underrated. All right, next one is also a little bit subjective to play style. As you guys can see, I am in a team right now but I am making a video. My team is nowhere near me. This is generally the case. If I'm doing something by myself, I'll still get my friends to invite me to their team. Why is that? All these cards like bodyguards gain six damage and energies resist while each team for each teammate excluding you. Because I'm in a team of four right now, I am receiving 18 damage resist and energy resist. I don't even have to be near my teammates to get the benefit. I could be halfway across the world. Inspirational. 15% EXP. I'm using this for leveling up. I'll swap it out later, but I gain benefits from being on a team 
I gain more EXP just from having them in my party. Squad maneuvers. I run 20% faster when a part of a team. Again, directly benefiting from it, even though they're not near me. But it's not just about the perk cards, guys. It's about saving money. So as, as of right now, if I open up the world map, you can see I'm up here in my camp. My friend's right there. There's another camp right over there. Boom, one down here by Camden Park. I can travel over to Mick Stealth Monkey's camp and go get that plastic. I wonder what they're doing. Getting some plastic, guys. Doing some dailies, grabbing some plastic. Wherever they are in the world right now, I could fast travel to them. Absolutely free. Fast travel to this camp. Absolutely free. Oh, I want to go over here. Fast travel to this camp. Absolutely free. Having them in your group is checkpoints for free cap reduction in travel costs. Major benefits for being in a group, but not even playing on a team. Something to consider there. If you just feel like being left alone for the day, you're a lone wanderer. Doesn't hurt to have somebody in your party to reap the reward. Words. A lot of people are struggling with stim packs in this game. You can see I have 58 diluted stim packs and I just came back from a raid in the Cranberry Bog, which I used 70 stim packs while I was there. It was nuts. So how do I have so many stim packs for only being three days into the game? Well, it's actually a lot easier than you think. So the first thing you want to do, the moment you hit level 34, get chemist. Your life will change the moment you hit level 34. It might be a little bit harder up until then, but until then you can use Pharma Pharma. You'll find extra stim packs and containers. That's somewhat helpful. I'm going to get rid of that now that I have chemist. I don't need pharma farmer anymore. Hence my earlier tip of uh, picking different specials and then picking the card afterwards. I'm going to be upgrading my endurance while picking luck cards to replace pharma pharma. Once you have chemist, you get double the quantity when you craft chems. Go over to our chem station. Under healing, you will see you can create blood packs with antiseptic and tick blood. Tick blood can be found in Camden Park as well as the forest around Camden. Camden Park, you're going to be there collecting plastic cups. Might as well kill some ticks, get some blood. They can also be found on the very right side of the map in the swamplands all throughout the forest. So that's how you make your blood packs. And then once you have blood packs, you can use antiseptic blood packs and steel to create yourself stim packs. Because of chemist, you're getting two stim packs. And then you want to create diluted stim packs. Why would you want to dilute your stim packs? Because you're getting times four. You're turning one stim pack into four stim packs that are half the strength of one. So you're doubling the value of one stim pack. And generally speaking, one stim pack is usually wasted because it's overhealing you. If you use a stim pack at half health, it usually is wasted if you go with first aid. So that's my next recommendation here is getting stim packs restore four 45% more lost health. So a diluted stim pack will actually go from 30% up to 45%. Regular stim pack goes from 60% to 90%. So if, uh, using a full stim pack is just overhealing. Your diluted stim packs will heal you for half your health. You're quadrupling the value of a single stim pack with chemist and first aid. But we're not done there yet, guys. What if you want to quadruple your value Twice. I'm going to bring up a perk card here that you could get at level 50 in the luck section, and it is super duper. When you craft anything, there is a 10% chance you'll get double the results. Put that into rank three, and it's a 30% chance. So the trick here is when you're actually sitting down to craft, you pop on chemist, you pop on super duper, you start crafting your stim packs. There's a 30% chance that when you craft four, you'll get eight, and you're already getting benefits from chemist already. So you're getting boatloads. I still do not have super duper, but it's going to be super duper when I do. And last but not least, guys, is perk card swapping. And while it may seem obvious, it might not be to some people. And it actually is more in depth than some of you guys might realize. So what I mean by perk card swapping is, you know, something like green thumb, I like to run around with all the time, but something like pick lock, I don't need at all. When I run up to a level one lock that I need to open, I simply put on my pick lock. When I'm done opening it, I throw back on my green thumb. Simple. Uh, and I'm not ever wasting a slot by having three different pick lock cards. You'll also notice that I don't have expert or master pick lock yet. Why is that? I haven't wasted my level up points on them because there's something that I'm not going to have equipped at all times. So I can't afford them. I'm waiting to get them from perk packs or once I hit level 50, that's when I'm going to start collecting them. Plus, I don't really find that much benefit from picking locks right now. Anyways, it's just bonus loot and I have too much of that already. The exact same thing could be applied to hacker. I have it on there right now, but it's just there because I don't really have anything else. Armor is something that your crafted armor 
armor it has improved durability. I can craft two, rank three armor. Um, whenever I'm in town, I pop off my first aid. I put on my armor. I craft armor. Another small bonus tip while we're here, guys. I just noticed this, and I'm going to mention it here. I was going to repair my armor, and the thing is, repairing this armor took nuts and bolts, all sorts of crazy items. It cost me more to repair my armor than it did to craft brand new armor using rank three armor or perk. I, I've actually tested it. I don't have any broken stuff to show you, but every time my armor breaks, I craft myself a brand new set. It's cheaper than repairing it for whatever strange reason. It, it is what it is. So another bonus tip while we're talking about perk swapping. But back to the perk swapping, there is a huge debate around intelligence. I've seen people talking about it. Let's go into pick a perk here, intelligence. You can see there's a lot of crafting cards, starting with armor, fix it good, gunsmith, licensed plumber, makeshift warrior, power Smith, science, science expert, science master, weapon artisan, and there's probably even more. I still have seven levels left to go on my character. Now here's the thing. All of those crafting cards, you don't need to equip them only when you're in town. So I'm going to bring up a couple cards on screen here. Power patcher you get at level 44. Your power armor breaks 60% slower and is cheaper to repair. When you combo that with fix it good, rank three, you can repair armor and power armor to 200% of normal condition. You mix that with super duper. There's a chance for it to double the results, making your repairs go up to 400% durability. And in order to get that bonus of repairing your power armor to great durability at cheaper costs, you would have to equip rank three fix it good with rank three power patcher for a total of six intellect for those two cards. Every other combination of intellect cards, you can be in town. If you want to craft weapons, you put on a rank five weapon crafting card. And the same could be said for every other combination. So in my opinion, every character should have a base intellect of six if you want to actually make use of crafting in Fallout 76. And there's really no need for more than six intellect. I don't really see a lot to be beneficial other than the crafting. As you guys could see there, there's a plenty of cards that you're going to want to swap in and out. But generally, you only need to do it when you're in camp or when you run up to a picking terminal and a hacking terminal. Most of the swapping in and out comes from intelligence. Same with the one from luck for the super duper. And I think there might be a couple others in there somewhere so be sure to go check out the perk guide system online i'll have a link to it down below you can do your own builds look through all the perk cards in the game it's super helpful so i'm going to have a link to that i have one more special little quick tip for you guys before we go a bonus tip most perk cards get their benefit from the first rank after the first rank the values decrease by 50 percent so for example in perception if i go with commando i get 10 percent from the first card and then it goes to 15 percent for the rank rank two and 20% for the rank three. The first point is just as valuable as the last two points. So rather than putting three points into here for 20%, it's much smarter to get a rank one commando, a rank one expert commando, and a rank one master commando for a total of 30% to your automatic rifles for three points versus 20% for three points. You're coming out 10% on top for the same cost. Once you're at 30%, you might want to consider getting rank two commando or, and, and so on and so forth. But there are plenty of cards elsewhere to help improve your rifle damage. And you might want to consider getting those first. So rank one cards is generally always great to get at least the rank one. Another great example of this is bodyguards. Six damage resist for each teammate. After six, it goes eight, 10, and 12. The first rank is just as powerful as the last three ranks. So one special point is equivalent to three more special points. So you're really having to pay more and more. It gets more expensive for less payoff. Not all cards are like this though. This one, Squad Maneuvers, it's a flat out 10% and 10% for a total of 20 when you're on a team. So be sure to check that. But there are others such as Butcher's Bounty, 40%. For the first, and then it goes 60, 80. Same with Pharma Pharma, 40%, 60, 80. So you, it's always good to just throw a point there for now or throw it on if you have the card from a perk pack. 40% chance of getting something double is good if you have room for it. But upgrading it, it starts to get pricey. I think it's especially important to consider this stuff when you're looking at specializing your character in damage. That's where it really pays off. Rank one commando, rank one expert commando, rank one master. After you get rank one of all three, consider upgrading from there. 
there. They're only wasting percentages and valuable perk points for lower the value. All right, everybody, those are my 10 tips for Fallout 76. I hope you found them helpful. And if you did, please be sure to smash that like button, subscribe. I have plenty more tips and tricks and helpful videos on the channel currently and many more to come. So be sure to check back in and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.